In our last example, we looked at how to calculate the atomic radius for a specific metal, silver, based on the dimensions of the crystal cell. Knowing the structure of a face-centered cubic crystal's unit cell, we were able to take the edge length and relate it directly to the atomic radius. That's a pretty straightforward geometric relationship. There's another basic physical property that you can get quite easily from the dimensions of the unit cell and knowing how many atoms are present in the volume that constitutes the unit cell, which is the density of the metal or the density of whatever crystal material you're looking at. In this case, the general strategy is that if we know how many atoms are in the unit cell and we know how big the unit cell is, that should still reflect the density. And we can use fundamental dimensional analysis, the same dimensional analysis skills that we've been practicing since the first week of general chemistry, to establish that relationship between the number of atoms per unit cell and the density of a metal. We can do this for any unit cell, particularly for the density of ionic compounds as well, but the more complex the unit cell, the more difficult it is to establish the number of atoms per unit volume in the unit cell. So in this case, we're going to take a look at an example where we're going to calculate the density of silver based on the dimensions of the unit cell. In this case, we're told based on x-ray measurements, again, that the edge of the silver metal unit cell is 407 picometers. Silver crystallizes into a face-centered cubic FCC crystal structure, which means there are four atoms in the unit cell. We'd like to calculate what is the density of silver in grams per centimeter cubed and see if it agrees with what we kind of know the density of silver to be if we look it up in the table of around 10.6 grams per centimeter cubed. So since the density of silver is something that we look up, we can look up in the reference table. We go into this problem with the expectation that our density should work out to be about 10.6 grams per cubic centimeter for silver. Let's see how we get there. So our basic strategy is we are going to use the atoms per unit cell to figure out how many grams of silver there are in the unit cell. And then we're going to use the edge length and the fact that the unit cell is a cube to determine the volume of the unit cell. These sound straightforward, but there's a couple of difficult mathematical dimensional analysis steps that you have to do along the way, and we're going to talk through that aspect. All right, so this is how we get the mass per unit cell. We start out with the fact that there are four silver atoms in the unit cell because it's an FCC structure, and then we can multiply by the definition of a mole. There are a mole of silver atoms per 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd Avogadro's number of atoms. And we know that a mole of silver has a mass of 107.8 grams per mole. So there's silver's molar mass. So we take four silver atoms per unit cell, divide by Avogadro's number, multiply by the molar mass to figure out how many grams of silver there are in a unit cell. So we have 4 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 107.8 grams gives us a mass of silver per unit cell of 7.16 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams per unit cell. So far, so good. What we need to do now is figure out the volume of the unit cell. But the challenging thing here is we have the unit cell in picometers, and we need to get the density of the unit cell in grams per cubic centimeter. So we're going to calculate the volume of the unit cell initially in picometers cubed, and the challenge is we have to convert picometers cubed to centimeters cubed to get a density that we're going to recognize. This is a little more challenging. First, we calculate the volume of the unit cell by remembering if we have a cube, a cube volume is length times width times height. In a cube, all those dimensions are the same, so the volume of the unit cell is 407 picometers we're going to cube that whole thing. That's the first bit. Now the thing to remember is that if you cube the 407, you also cube the units. So your volume of the unit cell is 407 cubed picometers cubed. Okay, the next thing that's going to be challenging is we have to figure out the volume in cubic centimeters. A picometer is 1 times 10 to the negative 12th meters. So a picometer is 1 trillionth of a meter. And that means that there are 1 times 10 to the 10th picometers in a linear centimeter. So there's 10 to the 10th picometers in a centimeter. 
The question is, what does that mean in terms of volume or in terms of cubic picometers per cubic centimeter? Well, if there are 10 to the 10th picometers in a linear centimeter, there are 10 to the 10th cubed picometers in a cubic centimeter. This is something fundamental about how volume works. And I show, I've kind of glossed over the explicit calculations of that aspect of the dimensional analysis on the slide here, but I include kind of a proof or a reference for you as part of today's lecture that explains more fully how I get to this conversion factor. So if this doesn't immediately make sense to you, check out the document that's attached below this example problem that explains how we get this relationship. This relationship is extremely important. If there are 10 to the 10th picometers in a centimeter, there are 10 to the 10th cubed picometers cubed in a centimeter cubed, and 10 to the 10th cubed is 10 to the 30th. So there are 10 to the 30th cubic picometers in a cubic centimeter, and that means in terms of cubic centimeters, there are 6.74 times 10 to the negative 23rd cubic centimeters. That's the volume of our unit cell. So I now know the volume of my unit cell, I know the mass of my unit cell, if I divide the mass by the volume, I'll know the density of silver. And so if I do that calculation, density is mass divided by volume. I have 7.16 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams divided by 6.74 times 10 to the negative 23rd cubic centimeters. Mass of the unit cell divided by volume of the unit cell gives us the density of silver it is indeed 10.62 grams per centimeter cubed, which agrees with the density of silver if you look it up in a reference table. We're entitled to three sig figs here because our four atoms per unit cell is an exact measurement. Our three sig figs is based off the three sig figs in the measurement of the unit cell edge length. And so we would report our density as 10.6 grams per centimeter cubed.